privilege of introducing you to Mrs. Laura Bush. This is not her first time here at the site. In the days immediately following September the 11th, Mrs. Bush was here. She came to pay her respects and to grieve with those that lost their loved ones. During a time of unspeakable tragedy, Mrs. Bush brought some calm and comfort to those that she visited with and those that watched from around the nation. Each time that Mrs. Bush has come back to this place, her grace and compassion have been felt by all that have been with her. She is a lifelong lover of our national parks, and her presence here at one of our nation's newest national parks helps to convey the importance of this place. Please join me in warmly wel welcoming Mrs. Laura Bush. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Joanne, and thank for you. Thank you for your good work here for the National Park System and especially for this Flight 93 Memorial. I'm honored to mark this day with the families of Flight 93. And I'm happy to be here with the First Lady who serves our country with such grace. Thank you, Governor Rendell and Secretary Salazar for your good words. And thank you, Gordy, for representing the families uh, that I'm looking at before me. When I was first here on September 17, 2001, this quiet field was scarred by a smoldering crater. Our grief was raw and our heartache was heavy. We were just learning the names of those aboard Flight 93 and the story of their sacrifice. This peaceful place was not chosen by the terrorists. They had other targets for their violence and hate. This spot was chosen by the passengers of Flight 93, who spared our country from even greater horrors. As we gather to remember those who were lost and honor their courage, we are deeply grateful. The events of September 11th grow distant in time, but they remain vivid in the memory of our nation and in the hearts of those who suffered such a great loss. Over the years, we've learned the stories of those last minutes aboard Flight 93. Passengers place calls to authorities to warn them of the hijacking. We know they call family members to assure them of their love and to tell them of their plans. One passenger called his wife and said, I know we're all going to die. There's three of us who are gonna do something about it. I love you, honey. And we know that in the midst of their fear, they were calmed by their faith. A crew member called her husband and told him that they were gonna rush the hijackers. Over the phone line, he heard other passengers whispering the 23rd Psalm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Nine years ago, in the skies above this field, and in Washington, and in New York City, we saw the worst of our enemy, and the best of our nation. And we were suddenly reminded of many half-forgotten lessons. We saw that there is evil in the world, but also good at the heart of our country. America was attacked but the deepest belief of our democracy was vindicated, that our greatness and strength is found in the character of our citizens. Americans responded with heroism and selflessness, with compassion and courage, and with prayer and hope. In our grief, we learned that our faith is an active faith, that we're called to serve and care for one another, and to bring hope and comfort where there's despair and sorrow. 
we remember 9-11 not only as a day of great loss, but also a day of recommitment to certain enduring values. When the innocent are attacked, Americans defend them. When the innocent suffer, Americans rally to their aid. In the face of terror, Americans chose to overcome evil with good. And it was following the tragic events of that September morning that we saw the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We saw it here as Shanksville's first responders rushed to this field. And in the endurance of all of those who worked past exhaustion to rescue people trapped in the towers and the Pentagon. And again, as millions of Americans participated in blood drives, candlelight vigils, and memorial services, saying prayers in English, Hebrew, and Arabic. And we found unity in the shared grief. When this field was marked by smoldering ashes, now there is green grass. But the passage of time cannot erase the images etched in our minds from that calm September morning. We remember the moment the news came, where we were, and what we were doing. George and I grieved with the families whose loved ones perished on that bright blue morning. We thought about your loss every day that we lived in the White House, and your stories remain close to our hearts. George sends his love. And today we join with all Americans as we pause to remember those most affected by that day. We remember the families and friends of the lost and we still feel the wound of September 11th. We know the memories of your loved ones have not aged by time. You inspire us with your grace and strength. We remember the law enforcement and intelligence personnel who stand watch on our behalf at every hour. And we remember the men and women of our military who oppose radicalism and terrorism at this very hour in Afghanistan, Iraq, and other places around the world. On this day, Americans have no division. Together, we recall the events that changed each one of us and that united our nation. Together, we honor the lost in silence, and we remember that our quiet and peace is always defended by the courage of the brave. Thank you all. God bless you and God bless America.